quick overview with about five or six charts. I think Chad's going to do the same thing, and then I think we're going to open up some questions and answers. Uh, I thought I'd start with a little bit of the, the history of the PPA, because uh, those of us that are, that are in this business uh, talked about it a lot, and uh, it's sort of an interesting question is, you know, where did it really get started? And so for the history buffs, it actually got started, at least in this country, back in 78 with the, uh, the PURPA uh, regulation. And at that time, it, it was designed as a way to try and uh, promote renewable uh, energy uh, and create a vehicle by which private entities could produce power, which would be sold to the utility. So that was the purpose of the regulation. What it really drove was the, the adoption of a lot of cogen back in those days, and not a lot of adoption of other types. Over, over the history, however, in the last 20 years, 30 years, uh, it's now been adopted and it's used widely in the, white, the, the wind industry. And then uh, bringing it to where, you know, what we're talking about today, um, about, uh, let's see, three, four, five years ago, uh, really saw the advent of the beginning of the using of the PPA in the commercial behind the meter space. So selling electricity to a commercial or institutional uh, entity that would be buying power from the utility. So instead of the PPA selling the power to the utility, now you're selling the power to the end user. Um, and in fact, Chad's company was, uh, was one of the uh, early innovators in this area. Uh, and it really got driven and accelerated rapidly with the, uh, the introduction of the CSI program, the California Solar Initiative program here in California in 2007. Um, and today, uh, across the U.S., more than 75% of commercial installations that are being done are typically being done using a power purchase agreement. Um, very high level, I think most of you understand what a, what a power purchase agreement is. So it's a way for a customer, it could be a school, it could be a commercial entity, it could be a uh, city, a town, who wants to start using renewable energy, wants to buy green electrons, but they're not, they recognize that they're not in the business of owning and operating power facilities, and would rather leave that to someone else, may not have the capital, may not want to use that capital, uh, their capital in that way, and so they turn to a company like ours or like Chad's and ask us to, in fact, arrange for the, the construction, installation, engineering of that facility, and then we own and operate it and sell the green electrons to our customer under a long-term arrangement, typically 20 years. Could be long, could be shorter, could be longer, but typically 20 years. Um, here's a little uh, piece of data that came from Greetech. Uh, in fact. I think it's about a year and a half old. But what this showed was uh, sort of the movement from cash purchases of solar systems to the adoption of using PPAs by customers to, to, uh, to arrange for solar, the installation of solar systems. Um, and when this was put together, 2008 was still a forecast number. As I just described it, in fact, in 2008, the numbers came out very close to what this forecast uh, was. We'll see what happens in 2009. 2009 is clearly a year of a lot of change and a lot of transition. Uh, but I think that, uh, if anything, the push towards PPA is stronger now than ever, given the economic environment. Because we see customers who maybe a year ago would have thought about the potential of owning their own system, now realizing uh, that in these economic times, they really don't want to deploy their capital this way. They want to focus it on their core business and uh, let folks like us really uh, arrange to build the facility. All right, so this is a very complicated slide. I'm going to walk through every one of these boxes and explain exactly how this all works. Uh, needless to say, I'm not going to do that. Uh, suffice it to say that behind the scenes, there is a lot of complexity. There's a lot of financing complexity. There's a lot of legal complexity to make sure that these things work. Uh, there's a lot of history in the industry uh, that I alluded to early, earlier in terms of entities that have have used these types of structures in the wind industry um, and other forms of uh, other parts of the energy industry. And what we've done is taken some of that learning and now applied it to this new market, the commercial and industrial rooftop space. This is what it looks like from a customer's perspective. It makes it very simple. They enter into an arrangement an agreement with us where we agree, agree to sell them electricity. They agree to buy that electricity. They continue to still have a relationship with the utility, and that's important both from a net metering perspective, so to the extent that there's a, there are periods of time when the solar facility will overproduce, that electricity is sold to the utility, the customer gets credit for it, 
but also very importantly, they maintain their connection to the utility so that if there, uh, if there are times when uh, the solar facility isn't producing enough electricity, they purchase that electricity from 